You know, at this point it seems apparent that something strange is happening in the case of Leslie Van Houten. After exhaustive review of the nature of her original crimes, as well as her deportment during the 52 year span of her incarceration, her request for parole was recently approved for the fifth consecutive time since 2016. And for the fifth consecutive time it was once again blocked by California's governor, this time by Gavin Newsom. And so the obvious question is, <laughs> how does that discrepancy make sense? Of course, uh, at the most superficial level, the answer is obvious. The governor is always operating from a political perspective, whereas Leslie's parole boards are simply fulfilling a straightforward juridical function. And the thing about political perspectives is that they inevitably involve the vagaries of public perception, especially insofar as it can translate into votes in future elections. And so if the final decision about Leslie's fate belongs to a political operator, then all other considerations such as, uh, such as what? Such as integrity, fairness, compassion, principles, rational coherence, etc., will predictably fall by the wayside. And at that point, cases like hers will become mostly about protecting and preserving political power. And all of our lofty, noble ideas about justice will be at best a very secondary consideration. But, of course, that still leaves the most important question unanswered. Exactly what dynamics within our culture are determining Gavin Newsom's behavior in Leslie's case? Thomas B., who is a frequent contributor to Ali's channel, describes them in terms of how the public has come to see Leslie's case as inextricably associated with the cultural mythology that has evolved around Charles Manson and his crimes. And, as a result, the public no longer sees her as an actual human being, but as a kind of demonic caricature, and perhaps even as a female reflection of Manson himself. However, I'd also say that in order to understand those dynamics more deeply, it's important to realize that Leslie's case is no longer about justice per se. Instead, something else has taken over, something much more primitive and much more visceral. Namely, our collective thirst for revenge, for vengeance, for experiencing the giddy pleasures of schadenfreude as we enjoy the spectacle of Leslie's ongoing torment. Until one day, she eventually expires. And if you still believe that her case is mostly about justice, then consider how often we release prisoners whose crimes are often way worse than hers after serving only a fraction of the time she has. Does that seem like justice? Really? Because <laughs> uh, personally, I'm not seeing it. Of course, in our modern era, we like to pride ourselves on having outgrown the petty and unsavory dynamics that once motivated the witch hunts of centuries past. But, uh, but have we really? Or has the clamor for blood and spectacle merely taken other forms in our time? And could it be that the glaring incongruities that have become apparent in Leslie's case, especially over the last five years, are little more than an expression of those very same primeval desires, raging like a storm somewhere inside of us, but now mostly repressed and refracted through the lenses of things like our jurisprudence system and perhaps other social institutions too? Could it be?